but then it grew back thicker. Like so much thicker, it was weird. What exactly happened? Did I stumble across some secret? Or was this just a fluke? Well, let's dive into it, but you gotta focus. All right, so what exactly happened? Well, first we have to go back, way back. October 27th, 2007. That marks the day that I decided I would learn how to spin on my head. Yes, you heard that correctly. I wanted to learn how to break dance. And at the time, I only wanted to learn one move and one move only, the head spin. So essentially balancing on my head, upside down on the ground, spinning around in circles. You see where this is going. So when I did first start training in these early stages, like for the first month, I wore a helmet, but then I also ordered this special spin beanie right here. This is my original one that has this mesh on the top of it that helps you glide on a smooth surface better than just a normal beanie. I literally spent two hours every day, six days a week, upside down on my head on an old pizza box trying to spin around in a circle. But all of this practice wasn't for nothing because after only four months of no social life and my parents severely questioning their son's new extracurricular hobby, I was able to free glide about eight spins without putting my hands down. <laughs> Dude, that February walking through the hallways of high school, cocky. Dude, cocky. So I did what any other good e-boy would do back in the day. I made a four month trailer to show off my progress and how dangerous I could be on the dance floor. Now at the end of this trailer, I kind of had a weird outro where I took my beanie off and then I like showed the top of my head, like yeah, head spinning. And I don't know, maybe I was just oblivious or something cause I was just so tunnel vision on how cool I was at the time. But when my mom saw this, she freaked out because what was going on on the top of my head right here was pretty brutal. You could see in the footage, my head was kind of red and all this hair right in the middle here was completely missing. It was gone. Now you're like, wait a minute, but you were wearing head protection. How could this happen? Okay, well, this is my head protection right here. Now I'm a little upset because I literally just spent like an entire day sifting through all my old hard drives to try to find where this trailer is, but it's, I can't find it. I literally can't find it. I think I deleted it out of shame after my parents freaked out after seeing the top of my head. I wish I could find it. Maybe I'll find it. If I find it, I'll, I'll let you guys know in a future video. But yeah, anyways, my mom freaked out. And I'm just like, mom, like whatever, it's just a little bit of hair. And my mom being the great mom she is, I'm not actually putting my mom down in any sense. I'm actually saying, it, I think it was good of her to be concerned. Well, you know, she's diving into the computer on all this research, like trying to search up. And at the time there was like very limited forums on all like breaking and b-boying and stuff. But she came across this one article or forum post or something that had to do with head spin baldness. Yes, hair can fall out if you're upside down trying to spin on your head all day. But according to this article or post or whatever, if you allow that part of the head to heal back up, then the hair can grow back. Unless you just keep training and keep training and keep training and don't allow it to recover, then this spot might become callous. You know, like on your hands, you might have callous here from doing a lot of pull-ups or weightlifting or whatever. Well, yeah, that can happen on the top of the head. And apparently, according to this article, post or whatever, when that happens, you're done for. Ah, great, my parents are freaking out and now I have this bald spot on my head and if it becomes calloused, well then it's really gonna be a bald spot and I'm thinking like, man, but I really wanna learn how to spin on my head even better. I wanted to get even better at it, right? I wanted to be just like so good at it, but I also, you know, I wanted my hair, or at least I wanted it to grow back. So I came up with this idea. You see, spinning with a spin cap or just a normal helmet, all the pressure was still going to the center point right here. So what I did is I found an old skate helmet that had a styrofoam interior, and I cut out the styrofoam in a circle mimicking this pressure pattern right here so that the top of my head would sit inside this circle. And instead of all the pressure being right here in the middle, it was then dispersed around the edges of the side. So I trained with just that helmet for a few weeks. And then after a few weeks, I interchanged between that helmet and the normal helmet to confuse the head. And after using this hack helmet for a few months, praise the Lord, it actually worked. The bald spot that was clearly there in the center of my head filled back in and it looked like I had pretty much all of my hair back and I was still able to train head spins pretty darn frequently. But then I ended up busting my elbow up pretty badly. You see, I was trying to do the head spin and then smash my elbow down and do an elbow track, jumping from this elbow to that elbow. And I did that so many hundreds of times. 
I ended up rupturing my bursa sac in my elbow and there must have been like a micro cut or something because it got infected with staph. I had to go to the hospital. But yeah, the infection started to subside and then I allowed this to heal up. But during that healing process, I didn't train at all. I took the time off. And then after the elbow was healed, I kind of just like took a relook at everything and decided, you know, maybe I shouldn't just be doing head spins all the time. I want to learn some other break dance moves or power moves. So I started my journey learning air flares. And air flares are jumping from hand to hand and really don't require you to go on your head at all. So I took all this pressure off my head and started training jumping hand to hand. And this is where the weirdness happened. After about a year of just doing this new type of training off of my head, training these air flares, I remember looking in the mirror and being like, it's so dark right there. And I noticed the spot that was once bald from spinning on my head and pulling all those hairs out was like double hair. It was like double hair. It looked like a freaky little animal in the middle of my head. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, right. But for real, the spot that was once bald from doing too many head spins was now grown back thicker than before. So as you can probably guess, trying to look for some studies onto why this might have happened based on the concept might be near impossible to find. Well, I actually did find something. Published in the British Medical Journal is this one document, this one accidental case, where this 78-year-old man who already had male pattern baldness accidentally burned his scalp, but then shortly after, hair regrew back in that bald spot. So according to this article, a 78-year-old man with common male pattern baldness was dozing in an armchair when he fell headfirst into a coal fire. He sustained full thickness burns on the left part of his head where it would be bald already from male pattern baldness. Blah, 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 blah. Two weeks later, he commented that his bald patch started to grow hair again. And over the next four months, his hair continued to grow. And then they say, although interesting, it is difficult to see how this type of stimulation could be applied therapeutically. <laughs> no, duh. So the question to be asked is somehow did this burn stimulate the recovery process that not only healed the skin, but secondarily stimulated hair regrowth? And did the same thing happen to the center of my head once I stopped spinning on my head completely and allowed the recovery process to fully take over? Now, I am absolutely not recommending in any way burning the head to stimulate hair regrowth. This is merely just very interesting, but also leads me to a very similar concept that has just been started to be studied more recently, and that is Microneedling. Microneedling, also known as collagen induction therapy, is a process involving repetitive puncturing of the skin with sterilized microneedles. So the idea behind microneedling is you're causing this micro trauma to the skin to induce a healing process to that area of the skin and thus improve collagen production in that area and potentially improve the appearance of things like scars, acne scars, etc. You see microneedling appears to be traditionally used for dermatology. Now based on my research when it comes to microneedling and regrowing hair, the studies done are relatively new like in the last five years. For example, there's this one from 2021 looking at microneedling for hair loss where in this study they did find that microneedling monotherapy that's only using the microneedle significantly increased total hair count more than topical minoxidil. Minoxidil is essentially like Rogaine or just like a topical treatment that people use to help regrow hair. However, they found that the combination treatment of microneedling and topical minoxidil increased total hair count significantly compared to just monotherapy. So combining the minoxidil or Rogaine or whatever with the microneedling seemed to be like even better. In their conclusion, they said their preliminary results look promising, but they need further investigation of microneedling as a monotherapy. So the question is, could these micro traumas be inducing some kind of growth factor to these specific regions? And once allowed to heal, that growth factor or whatever also causes the hair to grow back as well. I don't know, microneedling might be something I wanna look into further, but pump the brakes right there because come to present day, there's something I need to confess. Well, actually it's not a confession, it's literally just an observation. What I've observed in like recent days, like over the last five years, is that once bald spot that regrew hair twice as thick, it's now thinner, or at least it appears like the hair there is thinner 
than it was before. It's like somewhere in between being completely bald and being normal, maybe like 75%. Whoa, wait, what? What happened? I thought you said it grew back twice as thick. It, it did, it did grow back twice as thick, but then I just, I just stopped caring, I stopped looking at it. Literally over the past five years, I've noticed, I'm like, whoa, wait, there's that head spin bald spot that's now kind of back. So yeah, what does this mean? I don't know. Is it just male pattern baldness essentially and I'm just getting older? Well, in my opinion, it's not in the typical male pattern bald spot, right? The male pattern bald spot is usually here and then in the bird's nest back here, not in the center of the head. What I do think is once I did get the bald spot and then I allowed it to heal, it seemed like my hair grew back twice as thick. And then after that, I learned how to do air flares and all this stuff, but then I eventually got back into spinning on my head kind of frequently, here and there. But when I did get back into it, I never used the helmet anymore. I only used these spin cap beanies, which are a lot more aggressive when it comes to the pressure on the head. And I never really paid to att attention to my hair afterwards, after the fact it grew back twice as thick. But throughout those years of training here and there doing head spins, maybe that caused some more damage slowly over time that led to this bald spot then coming back and maybe it got a little bit like callous or something. So my hunch is that maybe the second time that it fell out leading to now has been done over the course of like five plus years. I never really noticed it until I really looked close into it and it seems like it's more permanent this time. Not so abruptly to where I was like, oh gosh, we gotta stop, we gotta back off. I just kept doing it every week. Maybe if I micro needled that spot, just kind of break up that collagen a little bit, break up that callus, maybe it could maybe it could grow back even thicker, I don't know. So yeah, once again, I am not recommending rug burning the head, burning the head, or doing anything like that to grow or stimulate hair regrowth or anything like that. This is merely just my experience looking at some interesting articles and just asking questions because I think this is very interesting stuff. And once again, as always, if you're bald or going bald, really, who cares? In fact, being bald is cool. Like literally all the cool guys are bald. Deal or no deal. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a great day. Stay tuned, more videos coming out. Subscribe, turn those notifications on. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.